Bobby Lashley defeats The Miz to retain the WWE Championship. Randy Orton gets yet another sign of The Fiend's imminent return. And Shane McMahon and Braun Strowman have one of the most awkward and annoying segments in Raw history. Let's get everything going right now. Welcome to the WWE Podcast, your number one source for the latest in WWE news and straightforward analysis. Are you ready to get this thing going? Give me a hell yeah! I said give me a hell yeah! Then let's get this show started right now. Hey everybody, welcome to the WWE Podcast for the Monday Night Raw Review. Interesting show we have tonight because Raw was interesting. It was all over the place uh, for the better and for the worst. Uh, We're going to get to all of it in uh, one of the weirdest segments I've seen in a while with Shane Braun. And uh, a part of me wants to rant, part of me wants to cringe, part of me wants to change the channel, and part of me understands what they're doing. A very mixed bag on that particular segment, but uh, we'll get to that in just one minute. But first, thank you, everybody, for joining us here on the WWE Podcast as we pump out nine shows a week for you guys. Nine. It's crazy. Nine shows that you guys get to listen to, and uh, it's it's really due to our great team here, not just me, as we have many different voices, and I'd, I'd hope that you give them a listen. I do four shows out of those nine every week, and the other hosts pick up the slack for me and make this a success, and I do really appreciate, obviously, the hosts, but the listeners who continue to build and continue to support what we do here, because it's not easy in a very crowded, very crowded uh wrestling podcast world that we all live in uh it's it's not easy to uh stay afloat and i do appreciate all all of you who have listened throughout the years or if you're a new listener i hope you give us a chance because i think you might find our audio refreshing i think that there's a lot of audio out there that uh can be very redundant or have a very skewed v- uh, vision of wrestling or maybe have a little bit of uh State run radio going on with um, you know some of the big time podcasts that you feel like maybe aren't the best because they aren't giving you real truth. It's maybe that they have friends in high places or whatnot. We don't hear. Okay, we got friends in low places. All right, um, to quote a very famous song. <laughs> so, all right. Anyway, let's let's get to it. And uh, first of all. Guys, uh, the rest of the week, tomorrow's Mailbag, tomorrow's Nostalgia, and then you guys know the schedule the rest of the week, NXT, and we have AEW covered by Mimi and her highs and lows of the week. Michael Ritter covers SmackDown, and Anthony DeMarco does his WWE rivalries on Friday. So I'm going to work on getting a co-host for this coming week uh, with the Week in Review as we close out yet another week closer to WrestleMania. We're only five weeks away. And WWE says WrestleMania is back in business. It's true. Uh, they are they are releasing tickets at a, a very limited basis. I would assume that they're going <clears> to <throat> mimic what the Super Bowl did at Raymond James Stadium with a 25,000 capacity, I would think. I haven't gotten the specifics on that, but it is exciting nonetheless that they're going to allow fans in an arena to voice their opinions where WWE doesn't get to play God with the reactions from their production truck that we get to hear real live human beings reacting honestly to the product instead of WWE the last full year getting to play God with the reactions, but I'm not blaming them. I would too. You know, I'm not blaming them. It's uh, it's exactly what I would have done given their circumstances. You need crowd noise, even if it's not real or if it's not real, I would still stick it in there. So, Okay, well, but th- that's exciting news, guys. The only thing is, I thought past WrestleMania, uh, what are they going to do? Because they're going to be in that Thunderdome. <clears throat> and that is uh, not going away anytime soon. I would think until, I mean, again, I'm not getting into vaccinations and, and politics with all that. But I would think that until they can go back on the road, I don't know if you can continue to sell tickets in one place every week. I mean, I'll, I think they'll stick with the Thunderdome. For the foreseeable future until, as a whole, the United States has, I mean, maybe like 50% of the states up and running. You know, sports are back at least in a moderate capacity and and all that kind of thing. And you can fill buildings to 50%. I mean, who knows? But I would think that WrestleMania is kind of a one and done for now with fans. I don't think to expect that every Monday night, every Friday night, uh, that you will see 
fans in an arena. So we'll get teased with it that things are going back to normal and then they'll pull back on it. But it's not WWE's fault, of course. So, uh, But it's exciting nonetheless, right, guys? Like, for the first time, we can hear tickets go on sale. How cool is that? I mean, something that we took for granted, something so simple as WWE saying that they're going to put, they're going to uh, have tickets on sale starting, you know, whatever. So if, if some of you guys are going, though, please, if anybody is deciding to go, I will bring you on the show. I'll, you know, and I, I mean that because I want somebody who's in person there to report back, call us. And we can get you on the show after the show, um, and and we can hear your in person reaction to being back at a WWE event for the first time in over a year or more, depending obviously on when the last time you went was. But um, just throwing that out there, if anybody does decide to brave Tampa, Florida, and throw themselves into the the the, the uh, Raymond James Stadium scenario, be very interested. If anybody wants to reach out to me, please do so. Real WWE Podcast at Gmail dot com. Pretty simple. Okay, well, guys, um, Raw was weird. <laughs> Raw was weird this week. And, you know, I'll start with, let's see, what do I start with? Start with the predictable. We opened with a championship match with Lashley and Miz. As expected, Lashley wins, which when they position a championship match, especially a WWE championship match at the beginning of Raw, you know there's nothing big that's going to happen. Nothing. I mean, I know they played games last week with uh, Lashley getting pushed back from 9 to 10 and 10 to 11, and then you knew that it was going to be in the main event and Lashley would eventually win. To open Monday Night Raw with a WWE Championship match, can anybody even tell me the last time that happened? I'm for real. When is the last time WWE not only put their top championship in the entire company on free TV, which I know they've done many times over the last six months, which I strongly disagree with, like very, very passionately disagree with free championship matches on TV and then free title changes on TV. So what the hell makes a difference for a pay-per-view now? I don't know. Um, I mean, you're essentially watering down what pay-per-views mean by giving away these matches. But you, I can't even tell you the last time a WWE championship match was the first opening match on Raw. I don't even know if it's ever happened. I'm sure it has. We've gone through like thousands of Monday Night Raws in our lives. Some of you. Uh, But I don't know the last time. I can't even think about it. So that's a really interesting stat that I'm I'm very curious as to if that's ever happened. But number two, it was a predictable outcome. And when they position it again at the beginning of the show, you know that you kind of understand what they're doing to get this out of the way. How The Miz was actually given this match, uh, I don't know. Is it, did anybody ever get an explanation? I thought they were doing away with automatic rematches. It's antiquated. Well, apparently not antiquated this week because we got an automatic rematch just because it's, again, but you won't always see this every time. When a champion loses, they don't automatically get a match sometimes. It's, it's a very pick-and-choose a la carte enforcement of the rules. So, I mean, it kind of is what it is. But at least we got a promo from The Miz talking to, you know, for, being very forthright that he purposefully got himself counted out and that he won. And that's not his fault that he's playing within the rules, which is true. It's cowardice, but it's true. Uh, I like that. Um, Bobby Lashley actually cut a promo backstage. That was interesting. You know, I understand MVP is a good mouthpiece, and he is, and he's a great presence for Lashley. He's done an amazing job for him and really for the whole, whole Hurt business. But for him, to be able to speak on his own is going to be important moving forward. You can't just always be the Brock Lesnar formula of just standing there looking mean, coming out, making, you know, 50 grand just to stand there while Paul Heyman cuts a promo. He makes mean faces and he goes away, which is essentially what Brock Lesnar did for a couple of years as champion, as a universal champion. So uh, I don't, you, you know, you can't always use that formula. And I think Bobby Lashley, it's going to be very important for him to speak moving forward. Even though he has a great mouthpiece in MVP, you can't always lean in that crutch. You know, you'd think in the 16 years that we heard about that he would have learned, even just by sitting and watching, how to cut a promo, right? I understand it takes a lot of practice and, and uh, finding yourself, it's super difficult to do. But you'd think after 16 years that he'd grasp onto something. Um, and he, you know, it was fine. It was fine backstage. He didn't talk about his three sisters. Uh, he didn't have Lana. That's always a good thing. So 
it was fine. Uh, you know, I, I'm good with it. He looks like a champion. He fits the bill. I, I'm a big Bobby Lashley supporter. I think many of us feel he's more than overdue. I would agree to, with that. And you just knew The Miz wasn't getting it back. I mean, there, were, there weren't even some hope spots that you would even have dreamt that it was going to happen. It was a very, very one-sided match for the most part. And Drew McIntyre looking on. The, um, you know, I, I don't know how he can just declare himself as the next one in line. I mean, I don't know how anyone's not even fighting him for it. I, I know Sheamus attacked him, and they've continued that. As expected, at least from my end, Sheamus and Drew continued their fight through and will probably end at Fastlane. We'll get to that match next. But, you know, it's kind of weird that he just says he's the next one up. Well, why? Why? I don't understand. I know, I know that he lost it and didn't get his rematch, but the Miz automatically got one. Well, why does Drew have to fight to get it? I, I don't understand this. You know, but he's a fighting champion, so I guess we're going to go with that as Vince continues to push his baby faces sickeningly, transparently to, oh, they got to be fighting champions, and then declare you're a fighting champion every single time they become champion. It's it's really just nauseating when he, you know, I don't, I don't understand the reason for that, and instantly everyone starts smiling when they turn baby face all the time. It's just, uh, it's, it's a little too formulaic and, and uh, too clean cut for me, but... Drew McIntyre will likely go to Fastlane, face Sheamus, uh, and then make his way to Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania. I don't think there's any other any other path. I mean, could you have Brock Lesnar insert himself in here and have make it a triple threat? Yeah, you could. And I think there's a lot of people who think that is likely. I think it's a outside chance at best. I think this should not be a triple threat for the WWE Championship. I'm all for Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. But I don't think this is the time for it yet. Um, This is about Drew. This is about uh, Bobby. And if Brock Lesnar does decide to come back, then it should be post-mania. I'm I'm okay with Brock Lesnar not being at this year's WrestleMania. Now, would I be sad if I hear his music hit and he comes out and F5 somebody? Of course not. But I think it's time for maybe us to step away from expecting big stars, big legacy stars every year like The Rock or Austin or whoever, uh, and and maybe just be okay with the fact that it's time for the younger talent to step up, not make them and not make let them feel overshadowed, not perceive them as overshadowed by the bigger stars. Uh, I, I think it's okay. I think WWE Vince has gone to the to the Attitude Era well more times than we can count, and uh, I mean particularly with Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair. I well, we've seen enough of them forever. I mean, I, I don't wish harm on either man, but. It's just time for them to kind of move on. I, I don't ever need to see Hulk Hogan on my TV screen again. Uh, as big as a name of he, as he was, I don't need to hear him, you know, talk about the H phone or whatever weird thing he was talking about the last time he was on Raw. It's just kind of worn out its welcome, you know, and it wore on its welcome about 10 years ago. I mean, so it's it's just, it's, I don't know. I mean, they do so many all-star nights and Raw 15s, Raw 20s, Raw 25s, Raw uh, 1300 watts, Raw, or Raw 1000. You know, they, they do so many different, like, uh, they did Raw Retro one night. I mean, there's so many different variations of of just bring, making an excuse to bring back legacy stars as they have possibly come up with that I am, I'm kind of done with it. Um, I love Stone Cold. Uh, he, I mean, anytime he comes back, I guess I make an exception because of uh, how big of a fan I am of him. But uh, or the Rock, you know, I mean, it, it, yeah. Although Rock seems to be fully invested in Hollywood now, and maybe even politics, we'll see. But I, I don't know. That it's kind of a sidebar, random, random rant there. So again, Bobby Lashley and and Drew McIntyre. I think that's an interesting main event you got there. I think that yeah, I'm sure Vince would love to insert Brock because he likes to make it as big as possible, and I get that. But I'm okay with Bobby versus Drew, two guys that are massive, two guys that have been protected, uh, two guys. Yes, they met earlier this year, and, and Drew McIntyre beat Bobby Lashley, and here they are in the main event of WrestleMania, presumably. Presumably. Of course, we haven't seen anything yet. But the match that Sheamus and Drew McIntyre had this past week, last night, on Monday Night Raw was really good, physical as hell. And those are two guys that literally, I mean, really did grow up together. There's a real friendship there, and I'm sure remain friends. I don't think the storyline really turned them on one another. But they have been real friends throughout their entire careers. And when you're good friends with somebody, you tend to be a little bit more 
comfortable, you understand their style, and you're more physical and liberal with the the the, the punches and kicks and uh, hitting the uh, your opponent with inanimate objects and things like that. You kind of take liberties, but not in an unsafe way. And we saw that this past week. They had a brutal match. I don't mean bad. I mean just physical as hell. And you saw the marks, those kendo sticks. Oh, why is a kendo stick a weapon of choice for WWE? I don't get it. You know, I, I think a chair is less damaging than the kendo stick that leaves a welt across the the length of your back, the width of your back. I don't, I don't understand why. I mean, it's because of the sound on TV. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I've never been a fan of the kendo stick. Never really. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think it's a effective weapon, at least from a wrestling perspective. It just kind of it's like a whiplash effect. I I don't know. Not my weapon of choice. Steel chair is still my favorite. Um, But I think that uh, the match again was very good. My God, and they knocked each other out with uh, dual steel steps. And the referee decided neither man could continue, and he brought in medical attention. At first, I was getting a little bit annoyed because they had such a bust ass match really good you know I really commend both men for the effort in that match and the physicality they dished out and i was originally looking at oh man the referee just takes this into his own hands again right it's flashbacks to the hell in a cell that the referee decided to just stop because he wanted to stop it when the purpose of it is to have a definitive winner and not allow outside circumstances uh to 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 really dictate what your your uh what your decision is to to do here, I mean, you're and and really over overestimate the role of a referee, right? Or overreach is the word I was looking for. When a referee overreaches his bounds to cancel or to not cancel, but stop a match outside of actual injury that possibly that could occur or did occur or may have occurred, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, in this case, he did ask if both competitors could continue, and neither man responded. And he stopped the match for medical reasons. So I guess we can't get too angry at that. They they did soften the blow a little bit there, and we didn't get a definitive winner. But it's all to set us up for fast lane with these two, as I thought it would happen. Uh, what, I predicted this five, six weeks ago before the Rumble. And I was all for, not before the Rumble, jeez. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> Elimination Chamber. Rumble's like two months ago. Almost. Um, but... I, I just really feel that Sheamus and Drew are going to have, I think, one of the best matches on the pay-per-view at Fastlane. Presumably, again, the match hasn't been announced. But when you come to a non-finish and you want a conclusion, you want to, you, you would presume that with two weeks at that point going to the pay-per-view, that it's going to happen, right? Like, you you kind of you see where they're going. You see the road. You see the, the writing on the wall. And that's cool. I'm all for a Sheamus versus Drew match. You would think, too, that that's going to be for the number one contendership. For the WWE title. If that's the case, I don't know what Sheamus has done to, to earn that, but we'll go with it. And really, why is anybody else not, not complaining? Why is anybody else not scratching and clawing and begging Adam Pearce for this match? I don't know. But, again, the match hasn't even been announced, so I'm talking about something that hasn't even happened. Um, so, again, that was probably the match of the night in my eyes. Really good stuff with Drew and Sheamus laying it into one another and in a kick-ass match that I expect to continue over the next, uh, well, couple of weeks until Fastlane goes. And so goes Sheamus back into, I don't know, obscurity or back into kind of the mid-upper card and occasionally visit the main event. And uh, that's kind of where Sheamus has been. I don't think he's ever going to be a, a, a big-time champion again. And that's no knock on Sheamus. I just don't see it given the the youth that they have there and what they've done with Sheamus over the last several years. So, okay. So let's, let's uh, take a turn here. I don't know if it's for the worse, but it's for the weirder. And yes, I'm talking about Shane McMahon and Braun Strowman. It's, I don't even know where to begin with this. It's bizarre. And Braun Strowman is coming off as a hothead, as he always has been. And he has a trigger finger, um, hairpin trigger, I should say. Easy to easy to piss off is, is basically what I'm saying. And he has this conspiracy in his mind that Shane's been after him. Now, really, what evidence does he have? Not a whole lot. 
Not really, not a lot. What the last the last match that they had, um, he forced Adam Pearce to tag with him for the Raw Tag Team Titles against uh, New Day, and then we got uh, Adam Pearce, or, or I'm sorry, Braun Strowman being told by Shane because Braun said that Shane made him. Well, Shane didn't make you, by the way. Wrong choice of words. Um, Shane didn't make you. He was suggesting. He was yelling at you to do it. Doesn't mean you have to do it. You're the one in the match. You don't. You're not. You're not. You're not controlled by Shane. So when he said well, Shane made me tag Adam Pierce, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. You tagged Adam Pierce. He was telling you to, but again, you don't have to follow that. So I didn't. I wasn't a fan of that because it's simply not true. But he tagged Adam Pierce. He lost the match, and I mean, really, who cares? Uh, there's really not a whole lot out of that other than, oh, yeah, by the way, Shane kept him out of the Elimination Chamber. You know who else Shane kept out of the Elimination Chamber? Every other man that was never a WWE champion. Yeah. So when Braun Strowman gets mad about that, he may want to join the other like 40 men on the roster that were not in that chamber because they did not meet that qualification of being a former WWE champion. So he's got no gripe. Like, he's got nothing. He's got nothing. He's got absolutely nothing in, in terms of actual real evidence that Shane McMahon is screwing with him. It's all in his head, and we're all – and that's what's the most frustrating part, too. Why? Like, no, Shane is not overtly screwing with, with Braun. I mean, he made the comment last week that the NBA course he's taking and the text he's reading is above his uh, reading level and then immediately recanted and said, oh, well, no, no, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. And I, I kind of figured that was a bit of a jab. But that's it, folks. We got a stipulation that he didn't meet that was applied across the board. It's not as if Braun Strowman was a former WWE champion and then Shane McMahon purposefully excluded him or forgot him. He didn't meet the qualification. And a lot of people didn't. Do you see anybody else complaining about this? It's So there's no nothing and no ground to stand on there. And then again, the, the tag match last week, it did, it, that doesn't count because Shane didn't purposely interfere. He didn't trip you. He didn't distract you. You took his advice. That's your fault, Braun. So maybe you are duh, duh, stupid, as Shane was saying. We'll get to that in a minute. This, this, is, this is where things, you thought I'm going downhill. Here's where really things just fall into an abyss. Uh, now, with with all that now again that's all that Braun Strowman has which none of it makes sense and I just broke it down and dismantled his arguments he uh, Shane McMahon and and Braun have this moment no Braun admitted or I'm sorry Braun demanded an apology from Shane Shane said I'm sorry but kind of in an aggressive way walked out acted like he wanted to say something and then kept going people kept prodding all night Adam Pierce prodded the uh, an interview pro, uh, interviewer. Uh, prodded to say, hey, Shane, you look like you were going to say something and then didn't. And then Shane comes out and says he wants to address Braun Strowman again. And he did and was rambling. I have never watched a segment of Raw that was more frustrating to watch from this perspective of just say what the F you got to say. I, I it, it wasn't, and it was in a way that was just angering to watch not angering at a character which is what you should be going for it's angering and channel changing and it's it's bad tv it's just plain bad tv it's not compelling you're not going to want to see somebody get beat up because that's what this whole thing's supposed to be about right it was just flat out angering and and annoying i mean just spit it the hell out i mean i i don't understand which really all he did was say, uh, but, but Braun, I mean, in, in kind of a way that was demeaning. And then basically called him stupid. Uh, she, he left the arena, Braun chased the, uh, the vehicle, but then got angry and stormed away. Shane was uh, apparently not in the vehicle as he then shook his head and said, you know, Braun's stupid, basically. So, so all of this, guys. Let's get this straight. Not only was that the most annoying segment I've seen on Raw in a long time, in an annoying, not even in a Miz and Morris annoying, annoying way, more in just bad production, bad writing. I don't know if Shane forgot his lines, why he was dragging it out. It wasn't compelling. There was nothing there that I'm like, okay, where are we going with this? We all know we're getting to a match. 
what's this based on? But we got our answer. The answer we got, it's based on Shane McMahon thinking Braun Strowman is stupid and calling him stupid. Yep. We're talking about two grown adults who are professional athletes. One of them calls the other one stupid or whatever they were blah, 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 and using kind of that derogatory tone to his voice. And that set off Braun Strowman like he's never been set off. It was it was ridiculous. I mean, we're really going to have a match at WrestleMania because somebody called somebody else stupid. Are we are, are we at the elementary school playground, for folks? I mean, is that where is that where Vince maybe got his the idea for this story? Was he hanging out with his grandkids and the other one one called the other one stupid and Vince is like, oh, damn it, that's it. I mean, seriously, this is the premise for the match. We all know that's where we're going. Let's not try to kid ourselves. It's going to be Shane versus Braun at WrestleMania. And when you look at, again, when you look at Braun's WrestleMania history, I understand he won the WWE Universal Championship last year. But that fell into his lap. That was not supposed to be his match. That was a match that he was only in because Roman Reigns didn't want to be in and, and chose... The health of his family, totally understandable. And probably the best thing he ever did to come back as a heel, ever. I mean, I, I do wonder if the pandemic never happened, if, Bra- if uh, Roman Reigns would become a, would have become a heel. Or at least this successful of one. You know, that's a hell of a question to ponder. I want, Let me know what you guys think about that. Had the pandemic not happened, does Roman Reigns turn heel? How about that? That's a hell of a question. But... I, I, I don't know. So Roman, or I'm sorry, Braun Strowman's WrestleMania history outside of falling into a championship match last year is just bad. I mean, so, and it's going to continue this year. Shane McMahon's a hell of a competitor. He is in incredible shape for his age. Great family man. I have nothing against Shane at all in terms of a per, as a person. I just don't understand this story. There's nothing for Braun to stand on at all, as I broke down. And we're really going to go with somebody calling somebody stupid to have a match. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's let's move the hell on here. Uh, so we also have Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke backstage. And they are just kind of talking because they've been, you know, they're probably talking about who's the most irrelevant right now. I mean, they're probably rock, paper, scissoring for who's the most irrelevant. And, and I don't, I don't mean that disrespectfully. It's just the way that they've been booked. I'm a fan of both women. I think more Dana Brooke than Bandy Rose, especially in ring, but they just have not been booked respectfully for a very, very long time. If ever, especially for Dana Brooke. So I would assume that's the context of their conversation. (laughs) And, uh, then we get this interview and Dana Brooke is talking about how, why not us? Right. Why am I, why we, we aren't, we shouldn't be overlooked and says that she wants Oscar in the raw women's championship. Fine. I mean, we all know you're not going to get it, but it's fun to at least dream. It's fun to talk about with these two. Um, I, I, again, I highly doubt it. And then we get Charlotte Flair interrupting and boy, oh boy, is she not, so much bigger in stature than the rest of the women. She's, she just looks so much taller than Dana Brooke and uh, Mandy Rose this past week. It was crazy. And so they come face to face and says that I'm going to, Dana Brooke says, whoever faces Asuka is going to leave it all in the ring. Uh, thanks for your, uh, your, your platitudes and your extreme generalizations and overused phrases. Thanks Mandy um, or, or Dana Brooke. Thank you for that. That really had, I mean, that was just stupid. Of course they're going to. They're, it's WrestleMania. And so, okay. I'm like crapping on things right now. But um, we all know it's going to be Charlotte and Asuka. I think the Vince knows that the fans know that, they, that it's going to be Asuka and Charlotte, which also makes me concerned that it's not going to be Asuka and Charlotte. When Vince knows that the fans know about a match that's supposed to happen months in advance, Vince oftentimes will shake things up. So I, I would not say this is carved in stone. I would say it's very likely that it's still Asuka versus Charlotte and Asuka's tooth needs to be repaired. 
And think about this. I bet you no one's ever said this to you over the last couple of weeks. When Asuka, the, the replay of Asuka getting kicked in the face by Shayna Baszler and her tooth going flying, which was really crazy. I mean, that was real. Asuka's tooth has got more airtime than the Raw Women's Championship. Think about that. I'm serious. When is the last time they replayed anything from Asuka's Raw Women's Championship win? When? Asuka's tooth that got kicked out of her face has more has had more airtime over the last four months than the Raw Women's Championship itself. Prove me wrong. Change my mind, as they say. Oi. I will be happy if Asuka is no longer Raw Women's Champion because I don't know why. I don't know what they're doing with Asuka. I don't understand why they have just pushed her into the the forgotten land of the misfit toys. I don't understand it. I, I've never been a, uh, a proponent of, especially with Asuka, pushing her to the side. She shouldn't, she shouldn't be always the focal point of everything, but she's the Raw Women's Champion. She's one of two of the biggest championships for the women in the entire company. And she's been completely forgotten over the last four months. Other than when something accidentally happens, she gets a tooth kicked out of her face. So, okay, let's move the hell on here because I, 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 I'm trying to find something that uh, brings me back the other way as I'm looking here. Oh, uh, Randy Orton and The Fiend and Alexa Bliss. This whole saga continues. Uh, we, we got a video package of The Fiend and Randy Orton over the last, I think it was last couple of weeks, of Orton spitting up some liquid, some black liquid, some red liquid, whatever it may be. And AJ Styles and um, uh, Omas are basically, you know, making fun of Randy Orton. And Randy Orton comes up, sees them, challenges them, challenges uh, AJ Styles to a match. He accepts for the main event of uh, Monday Night Raw. And... It's a good match. I mean, I think it was about 10 minutes long, 13, 12, or 10, 11 minutes long. And uh, no, it was a non finish. I'm surprised it was a non finish as AJ kind of seems to be a peg or two below Randy Orton right now, which is kind of crazy considering where AJ Styles was just a few short years ago. And now, uh, so both men are protected. And then Alexa Bliss pops up when Randy Orton was at an advantage. And uh, she has a jack in the box and says, she, you know, it looked like she was just about to pop the jack out of the box and says, not yet. And then uh, continues to make Randy Orton throw things up. So I, I don't know. Um, there's kind of stretching right now, but they've been stretching for a while. And when you don't have somebody on TV to build to a match that is at WrestleMania, presumably, it's actually pretty amazing that you've been able to do that without the person there. So, in other words, with these two people in a match, 50% of the match is Randy Orton, 50% of the match is Bray Wyatt, and yet you have only had 50% out of the total 100 possible percent of the those participants there, and Bray Wyatt has been MIA for three months, and they've still been able to continue this story and made people at least somewhat interested, e- even though if it's a diminishing interest, it's pretty amazing. And, and you know, credit to everyone involved. Is it perfect? No. Is it getting a little redundant? Yes. Are we all ready to just say, okay, give us the fiend, or like, can we just stop this story? Yeah, we're all kind of getting there. We're we're all kind of wearing thin on this story. Uh, I, I think that we still won't see the fiend until WrestleMania. I think that is probably the best best choice. It also makes people want to gravitate towards probably maybe purchasing a subscription to Peacock to watch the WWE Network to watch WrestleMania. So there's a monetary interest, albeit a, a slight, in, you know, a slight increase maybe for people that are interested in seeing the fiend. Um, you got to purchase Peacock, get a subscription, and watch wrestling uh, WrestleMania that way. You know, that is, I think, a smart move. I mean, you've already waited three months. The hell's another f- what four weeks, five weeks? Psst. I mean, geez, you've already done it this long. But the fiend, you know, we keep hearing the phrase "reborn." We keep hearing that phrase, he's going to be reborn. So when somebody's reborn, that would tell me that everything is changing. From music to outfit uh, to demeanor, everything. 
when somebody's reborn, I think that is what they're going for. And it should be. If, if Bray Wyatt comes back the exact same, that would be ridiculous. And, and, and it's, it's crazy to say, considering how crazy this storyline is from a reality standpoint anyway. But to have The Fiend come back after being burned with everything the same, imagine that. Imagine that. Then nothing changes. It, that would be that'd be ridiculous. But I don't even know what kind of match they could have. I don't understand where they want to go with this. I've already talked about my issues with the fact that they booked themselves into a corner by going so extreme. Now you have to pull back. So I, I don't know. I don't know what, what this is going to be. If it's even a match. I mean, maybe they just have a staring contest. I don't, I don't know. No. Uh, it's late. Uh, but anyway, I, you know, I'm good with it. And I think Randy Orton and The Fiend and Bray Wyatt will put on a, a good match, whatever this is. Whatever it is. I know we're kind of previewing WrestleMania a little bit, but we all know that's where it's going. So maybe it'll be a Firefly Funhouse match. We can only hope. Of course, I'm joking. I don't know about the rest of you. Okay. Uh, where are we at here? Um, I'm scrolling through the results because I know that I know that, again, Hulu misses a, a decent amount. Oh, Xavier Woods defeats the Raw Tag Team Champion, Shelton Benjamin. Um, Woods took advantage. He rolled up the opponent, his opponent into a small package for the three count. I'm reading that description just to make sure that I got it right. Yeah, so uh, Xavier Woods beats the Raw Tag Team Champion, Shelton Benjamin. I, I misspoke earlier. The Raw Tag Team Champions are the Hurt Business, not New Day. When I was talking about Braun and Shane getting a Tag Team Championship match, I was visualizing New Day. Or I'm sorry, I was visualizing the Hurt Business, and I said New Day. So I'm sure some of you caught that. But, uh, yeah, okay, fine. I mean, I don't know what this match really meant. I mean, I guess the power of positivity overcame the Hurt Business. Whatever. Uh, Riddle defeats Slapjack. <sighs> I'm Now, not only is Retribution just less than irrelevant. They're, they're like, I you know, if I made a debut... In WWE, it would be more impactful than watching Retribution right now. That's, I mean, I would be more of a talking point. And I, nobody knows me, right? Like, nobody in WWE fandom knows who I am. But that's how little Retribution means, is if I just walked on the ramp. I'd probably get more of a reaction than these guys do. But Riddle is the United States champion, the newly crowned United States champion, and he's muddling around in the lower card? What? They just don't have anything for him to do? Can we set up a match for him at, uh, at at Fastlane, please? Do something instead of just a throwaway match? But lo and behold, I mean, that, that was my concern. But Mustafa Ali pinned the United States champion a week ago in a non-title match. And it was announced, though, that Ali would challenge the title holder next week. Um, but again, this match itself, outside of Mustafa Ali, I mean, I, I don't know. This, this is just a throw, kind of a throwaway thing. Nia Jax and Shannon Baszler defeat Naomi and Lana in a WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match. I, okay. I, I mean, as expected, I don't think Naomi and Lana were really destined to to really go anywhere here. I'm good with somebody dropping the belts to, or I'm good with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler dropping the women's tag team belts just to break this team up. Shayna needs to go off on her own. It's like her powers are reduced when she's with Nia Jax. Like Nia Jax is the kryptonite, and Shayna Baszler is being her her powers, her, her energy is being sucked into the black hole that is Nia Jax. I guess, pun intended. I really didn't mean to do that. <laughs> but that that's what it feels like with Shayna Baszler, that she's trapped, doesn't it? It feels like Shayna Baszler is this prisoner in a tag team and that you know she could do so much more damage as a single star. We've seen it. I mean, hell, she was breaking arms over the summer and then she softened up when she met Nia Jax and they all just became... This this unlikable tag team that became or this, this tag team that didn't have any chemistry that suddenly has chemistry now and is dominant. I'm ready for this to to be moved on with. Um, I'm, I'm all good with Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax for the rest of my life. Um, I think it's time. They did a formidable job. They did a better job than I thought. And they added a lot of value to the women's tag team belts. But I'm good with them dropping the belts at um, at Fastlane or 
I don't know, somewhere, somewhere that's anywhere, anywhere. I'll take anywhere. So, uh, again, Shayna Baszler, I'm sorry, Nia Jax and uh, Shayna Baszler are victorious. And Naomi and Lana are not. But, uh, so, they retain. Okay, so that that really does wrap up my Monday Night Raw review. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any nuggets that I missed. I don't think so. The only thing that I wanted to mention down, I had written, I have written down in front of me here, is Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce on uh, Raw Talk, best promo she's had by far, and it was talking a, a kind of a, a worked shoot promo. So any anytime it's a worked shoot, it's worked, but it's also based in reality, which is what a worked promo is. A shoot promo is when you're just off the cuff. It's not scripted. You just kind of go into business for yourself. It felt like a work shoot. So we'll go with the terminology, but it was still very damn. It was very good by Peyton Royce. Now, again, the bar for Peyton Royce is set pretty damn low because we haven't heard a whole lot from her other than iconic, which I still don't understand the meaning of breaking up the iconics. And I still miss them and losing into losing random tag team matches, losing random matches, really no direction. She, she's been a fish out of water for quite some time. And she talked about this on raw talk and our truth is there with him or with her. And, uh, you know, she was talking about how that I've been overlooked and I've, my patience has been been wearing very thin. I picked up and I, you know, I moved from one country to the other. I didn't know anybody, didn't have much of a support system. And now I'm here. And, you know, she's tired of the same old, same old with the Raw Women's Championship and declared that she, you know, she's going to be looking out for Asuka. I like that. She's And the quote of the, the money quote of this was that her potential haunts her. She even tweeted this out, that her potential haunts her. It's true. And I think that when they broke up the Iconics, the purpose of breaking up the Iconics, at least in part, was to make Peyton Royce a star. I don't think that when they broke it up, they made, they wanted to make Billy Kay a star. At least they, if they were a betting, if I was a betting man, I would have said, yeah, Peyton Royce is probably the star of that group. And lo and behold, it's been so far Billy Kay, but Peyton Royce, it's kind of like enough is enough. It's time for a change. There's a little Owen Hart for you. Those of you that remember that, but that's the way she feels right now. She feels like maybe she's at a, a breaking point and, I'm interested to see where it goes. Now, she'll probably just lose to Asuka and go back into her little hole. But I like the fire. I like these segments on Raw Talk that bring out, you know, more of a more of a real personality in stars. That's what I like. And it's a platform that doesn't have much of a script. It's a live hot mic. And people say what they feel. And man, oh man, the, the, a lot of stuff that's said on Raw Talk is light years better than what's produced on raw every single Monday night because it's real a lot of time. So I like, I like that. If you haven't seen it, just Google it or whatever, YouTube it, Peyton Royce, raw talk. You'll see what I'm talking about. It is, it's very, very good for Peyton Royce. So hopefully, I mean, hopefully something materializes from it. I, I don't, I don't know how I feel about Peyton Royce other than she's ex- an extremely good looking woman, which again, dime a dozen in WWE. We all know that that's kind of just what they are, most of them. But beyond that, I mean, I just don't feel a connection with her. I I loved her as the Iconics, part of the Iconics, but I don't know what to feel for her as a single star because they haven't given her any direction at all. Again, other than just randomness. So it'd be interesting to see if things pan out or if things if things move along. I I don't know where they're going with her or maybe nowhere. I don't know, but take a look. It's worth viewing. That's for sure. All right. Well, I think that clears up Monday Night Raw. Uh, I I don't know if I missed anything. Now, did our didn't our truth have some kind of interaction with Braun Strowman? He might have. I know that. I, I think I got a tweet from was it Mister? No, no, no. It wasn't Mister Casual Wrestling Fan. It was DJ Kuzmo, I think, who sent me something about uh, uh, Braun Strowman and our uh, our truth. So I'll have to take a look at that. Uh, on a side note, I am glad that Braun Strowman at least wore a tank top instead of his like you know. Seven sizes too small, camo shirt. That's always a good thing. So there is that. There is that. Braun does have that going for him. All right. Well, 
I'm, I apologize if I, if, I apologize if I miss something. I feel like I'm missing something. It's not a good feeling as I do a podcast, uh, but we'll see. All right. Well, guys, give us a five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts if you like us. Uh, subscribe. Tell a friend about our show. Hit us up at on Twitter at wrestling underscore audio on Instagram at WWE underscore podcast. If you want to get your mail into us before the mailbag show tomorrow, real WWE podcast at gmail.com. Or you can call us 518-952-0247 to leave a voicemail. you got three minutes to leave a voicemail for us and you'll get your question on the show for tomorrow night. It's a mailbag and wrestling nostalgia two for one tomorrow night uh, for all of you. So uh, also if you want to support us, Two ways to do that. You can click on the Amazon banner in the middle of our of our uh, website, www.podcast.com, and do your shopping on Amazon through there. It's just a way that tells Amazon we sent you, and it gives the show a little bit of kickback. Or you can, if you want an ad-free experience, you don't like the ads, you're tired of skipping through them, you're, you're sighing because, oh, there's another ad, go to Patreon and search the WWE Podcast for a dollar. You get the entire library with no ads. So not a bad value. So just wanted to plug that. All right, enough of that. Guys, thank you so much, and as always, I'll talk to you next time.